Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Odds and Ends podcast, where we talk about the likelihood of events and important ones at that. Uh, I'm here with Rohit Krishnan. Uh, Rohit is, I think, a thoughtful commentator uh, on many things, particularly on AI. He has built both probabilistic models, which I think is quite rare, and he's on the sort of uh, I, I don't know that we've I don't know that we've got a good spread here, but but something like he, he, he considers the risks to be much lower. Uh, and so I'm going to do a set of AI podcasts uh, talking through the models. And uh, uh, Rohit was the first one to say yes, so he used to be first. He gets to, to lay out the t- uh, terrain. Uh, how are you doing this morning, Rohit? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, so actually, uh, we already talked about this, so it's kind of advantageous to us uh, that... I'm, I'm slowing down because I realized that he's put it on screen. It's kind of advantageous. We've already, we've already done it. So what we can do is we can just uh, talk through um, talk through Rohit's model. So for anybody who is, is listening, uh, I have a sort of model building tool that, that I uh, have built. And so this allows us to sort of visually navigate through models. If you're on YouTube, you can see that. Uh, but if you're not, uh, hopefully I will try and talk to you. And so... Um, and correct me if any of this is wrong, Rohit. Rohit wrote a piece that we will link in the notes, uh, doing a sort of um, back of the envelope style, you know, calculation on on the risk from AI. And uh, he came up with with nine different factors that he just thinks multiplies together. And if you sort of say yes to all of them, then you end up with disaster. And if you say no to any of them, you don't. Uh, and so these things are um, real intelligence agency, ability to act in the world, uncontrollable, uh, unique or it coordinates against humans, alien, self-improving, deceptive, and fast developing. So that was very quick. We're going to do them slowly in a second. Like that'll be the meat of this podcast. We'll just be us talking through. And I guess uh, if I'm feeling brave, me pushing uh, right here on whether these will need to be here. Because I think the, the doomer in me will say something like, oh, you know, could we take out two or three of these? Because then, then the numbers start to go up much more quickly. But anyway, um, let's go Let's let's go through then. I think that sounds like a plan. Yeah, great. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, do, do you want to talk through, and, and in, you know, in this case, do you want to give us your sort of probability so that we can end up, um, I mean, as two girls will say, they already have probabilities, but like, you know, maybe you've changed your mind on some of them. Um, sure. Um, maybe I'll just sort of lay out uh, a yeah. quick model of how I think about it, and then we can kind of jump into each individual one. Um, the reason I wrote it was primarily because a lot of the discussions about um, the worst case scenarios come resulting from AI seem to presume an awful lot. And to me, I think what was the most interesting or important part was to try and at least figure out what are the ingredients that need to exist for something uh, really bad like eggs stress to actually happen and then be able to assess the likelihood of each individual one of them. Now, um, there are kind of a sub point there is that, uh, as you said, like we're going to go through it and I am fairly happy if they change or if they're modified, if some are removed, some are added. Because to me, like, what's more important is the process by which we at least try and figure out the right factors so that we can think about them in the right fashion rather than kind of get to a final number, which I'm less um, yeah. interested in in some ways because it's a fairly fuzzy future state that we're talking about in the first place. So yeah. to me, like... My <clears throat> general is that doom is like not a very helpful number because the only time you know yeah. about it, it's either like too late in either direction. Like, I think you want to get a certain start. Like, if things are going well or things are going badly or they're going better than you're expecting or worse. Yeah, precisely. And it's also like it presumes an end state um, that is one of, I don't know, you know, like depending on how you do combinatrix, an incredibly large number. And it's very hard to deal with one end state and looking into the future and say, how likely is that to happen? Because it attenuates over a period of time and your code of foresight kind of dies out. Anyway, all that said, um, the way I look at it is like, look, the, the event that we're talking about is that AI um, autonomously 
and on its own volition manages to gain power in the world and actually does something destructive to humans because it doesn't care about us or um, uh, because it sort of needed what we are made of or wanted to stop us in some weird fashion. That's kind of the, the hypothesis that sits at the back. Yeah. Along the route, there's a whole host of other types of risks from the very immediate ones that, you know, we don't know why it does what it does and therefore it might do something dumb all the way down through, you know, if we suddenly start linking up a large language model in order to do financial trading for us, we're going to lose our life savings pretty fast. And those are all like different risks, but those are not the uh, the key part that I'm kind of dealing with here. So that said, should I just go through sort of each individual one and give a quick brief of yeah. what that is? Yeah. yeah. So very simply, the way I think about it is like, okay, step one, it has to be intelligent, kind of necessary. If it has to do anything that is sufficiently surprising to us or is able to kind of defeat all of us combined as it goes, then it has to get smart enough. Step one. Step two, it needs to have its own sort of goals, streams, whatever. Like it needs to be not just a, a reactive machine the way that we have, you know, whatever GPT-4 is a reactive machine, right? Or even AlphaFold is a reactive machine. We ask it questions, it runs and kind of gives us the answers. Three, it needs to have the ability to act in the world in the sense that it is not just able to kind of come up with whatever plans on its own mind and be able to hypothesize about it, but it actually has to have the ability to kind of perform actions that affect atoms in the real world. Four, um, it'll break through whatever rules that they've put on it. It's uncontrollable. Um, you know, uh, like you can kind of, there are no strict rules that is going to be able to kind of put a boundary in and around it. Five, unique. Um, this is sort of, I think you kind of already mentioned it, it's like in a, in a coordination fashion. To me, like the, the core hypothesis here is something like if um, if it's not unique, a lot of economic arguments kind of come in. This is, I think, closer to where Garrett Jones has conversations about economic models of highly successful countries where you have an equilibrium that is formed that is not necessarily bad for everybody concerned. That's why it's sort of the uniqueness is important. Um, six, uh, that it does not have the same moral constraints than we do. Seven, it's self-improving in the sense that it's not reliant on us giving it power or us actually training it for it to get better on a um, whatever, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day basis. Eight, deceptive in the sense that it is able to deceive us intentionally in the sense that it is not just a goal-seeking mechanism that actually does what it does, but it basically has to kind of fool us so that we are not able to stop it somewhere along the way. And nine is that it's fast. And the fast is important because this is when it is able to go much, much faster than we can anticipate or react to. In the sense that if it goes slowly, you know, suppose the doubling times are 18 months, we can kind of see it happening. We can test it. We can stop it before it gets to any critical point. If the doubling time is 18 minutes, we won't be able to do that. Somewhere in that spectrum lies kind of the problem. Now, each one of these things, you can actually put estimates around it. I think... Uh, at least even including in my um, essay, I had said sort of that like, I am not particularly um, confident in the individual probability, estimate, est probability estimates you would put on each individual sort of data point here. What is much more interesting for me is that like, if you think about these things, suddenly you start realizing what you need to test for or what you need to watch out for or what you need to analyze in order to figure out whether these things are actually happening or not. Um, that's at least a context. Now, I think one of the estimates that I had done, if you multiply the probability that I designed it out, comes to about 25 basis points, like 0.25%, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at the sort of screen that you put up. I think it, I mean, I'm happy for that to exist as one of the estimates here. I have no huge level of confidence, whether it's, you know, two orders of magnitude lower or higher. I, I don't know is the answer. And I, feel like it's also one of those things that's unknowable unless we get a lot more information. But I'm going to pause here for a second because I feel like I can run through a bunch of factors that are important for us to get there. And like we can go through them one by one. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, let's just let's just go through um, let's go through these like one by one then. Um, so, so real intelligence, what does real intelligence mean to you? In your head, like, what do you think, Rids? Like, what what are you thinking? What problems could it solve? What problems could it not solve? I think, to me, like the uh, best way to 
assess what it is is at least in the, in the ones that I have read, probably the best articulation of this is closer to what uh, I think Holden calls pasta, which is that if given um, a goal or given sort of a, a vague objective, it is able to independently push forward the scientific and technological advancement that humanity has. In order to do that, it has to be able to do fairly complicated calculations. It has to be able to understand a whole lot of stuff about the real world. It has to be able to model things out, create plans of action, um, deal with issues that arise, disappointments, change the course of action as it needs to happen, um, effectively understand the world in a lot more detail than it kind of does today. It's not I'm not entirely sure whether we are able to kind of sufficiently define it more than that. But to me, if it is able to do, you know, like I, like uh, Robert Heinlein said, you know, the 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 measure of a man is that they it's able to cook a steak, um, go to war, write a poem. There's a series of things that you we should be able to do because specialization is for insects. I think something equivalent is what I think of, and I think of intelligence. Um, if you're able to kind of take the model, so to speak, plop it down in the middle of a jungle or middle of a trading floor, and if it's able to figure out where it is and actually <clears throat> act in accordance with those, um, in with that particular environment, I think we would call it intelligent. Does that help? I'm not sure whether that's too vague, but I feel like it's one of those things like pawn, you know, you can't. You only know it when you see it, like the like the judge said. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, this is a, a famous case. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, um, yes, yeah, so this the judge sort of says, "Look, I, I can't say what it is, but you, but you'll know. I, I'll know it when I see it." Um, but I think there are some things also you could. Uh, um, I think there are also some things that we could sort of sort of say yes or no. It isn't, um, and. I guess I'm going to try and come up with some of these here in that we have some like little prediction markets. So um, one of these is like scientific breakthroughs by 2025. You know, if it was like making its own scientific breakthroughs, um, mm -hmm. like not guided by somebody else, if it was making its own. I mean, do you think that would be something where you'd be like, oh yeah, no, that looks like intelligence to me. Yes, with a caveat. Um the caveat here is that scientific breakthroughs, you know, not to go all kun on this, but like scientific breakthroughs come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and formats, right? Like yeah. if it manages to find, I don't know, surprising drug molecule discoveries, you yeah. you could very well have an argument saying that like that's a great breakthrough in the sense that the impact is amazing, but yet it's perhaps not as um fundamental in some ways as if it had come up with the theory of general relativity and even that to some extent is a is an assumption on our part because i don't know to what extent we ourselves know a strong theory of innovation where we can break it down into like oh that's just combinatrix of stuff that used to exist versus some sort of inferential leap that someone had made in order to kind of get there so if, um maybe i feel like there's an argument there but yes i mean the answer to your question is yes so, so maybe what you're kind of saying is sort of like you want it to kind of be lead author or, or I, I don't really know academics work, but like you want it to be the person like running the research. You don't want it just to be the person who's like, just like bashing out the like, you know, like you don't yeah. want to be the person who's just bashing out at the computations. I feel like there are a lot of answers it can get by actively, you know, playing the glass beat game at a high enough resolution and it's insufficient in some ways it probably has to um demonstrate capabilities that are higher than that if that makes sense so uh, a pi level might be one way to put it but to me um like darren star wrote recently that like gpt4 is highly helpful for him um, as a mind so to speak bounce ideas off of which is a great indicator that intelligence might be something that could actually exist in there it might not be the same way that we think of yeah intelligence the, because why would it see i almost uh like i think if it stayed at that level then i wouldn't think this like meets this criteria right this this seems right to me that like it's kind of like giving many options 
it's a bit like yeah. a big tool that sort of says, you know, have you considered it might be like a feature of the Mandelbrot set? Have you like looked at yes. extra markets? Have you like, and that would be like a useful tool. I'd love to have it in my eye lines, lifting out all these like possible, oh, like it could be related to this, could be related to that. Yeah. But that's not the same. Precisely. Right. Okay. Can you think of anything that would like really push you up or down at this point? I'm, I feel like, I don't know what drop really I put, I think it's reasonably high. I think, um, if I think about the history of how AI has developed a little bit, you know, from like the little baby neural nets we used to train back in college to, you know, CNNs, RNNs, whatever transformers today, each next revolution has enabled us to figure out a way whereby we can incorporate more information into sort of a existing and an architecture. Um, I could imagine there would be more leaps whereby we can actively train it, so to speak. I don't know what that might be, but like I would imagine, like given a sufficient big leap, the chances of intelligence goes up. Uh, similarly, if it does turn out that the magic we see from GPT-4 is not the result of emergent behavior from a really large model that we managed to train, but um, it's just kind of, as as the recent uh, speculation goes, eight expert models that have each been trained that kind of work together. That might be a point against us saying like, yeah, it can develop intelligence, but maybe even up to a certain level, but it's not going to be able to stand on the shoulders of giants and kind of bootstrap itself, if that makes sense. Okay. Just looking to see if I can, there was some sort of, or some sort of question about like scaling, about when the scaling will continue. I guess maybe there's like, you know, the last time we talked, we talked about sometimes the difficulty is not even in predicting the future, but in predicting the present. You know, there's, yeah, there's people who, there's, there's disagreements on whether GPT-4 can even currently, you know, code repositories. You know, we, I asked some of these questions on Twitter uh, and about the current world, they weren't receiving agreement. You know, is is it possible they can code a repository? Is it possible that it couldn't do many of the jobs, like many small tasks, those kinds of things? You you got you got different responses, and I know those are vague questions, but I think it still suggests that we don't even have agreement on the current capabilities that look. Um, we don't, and it's. Uh, I mean, some of it also like. Perhaps to add a couple of points to that, recently I think George Hotz kind of talked a little bit about his hypotheses on how, um, or maybe knowledge, on how GPT-4 was trained. And I think it surprised a lot of people because it kind of goes against the scaling hypothesis, right? That like we are effectively able to throw data and compute at the problem and actually start getting bigger and bigger models with more and more emergent properties. We don't really know if that's true. So to your point, we don't know what the present actually is. But the hypothesis a little bit is like one of the reasons why OpenAI is not G training GPT-5. They say they're not. It might be partially because they're out of ideas. And ensemble models are kind of in the future, which honestly by itself, is a, it doesn't surprise me either that there is a, you know, that the exponential that everybody expected turned out not to be an exponential, but turned out to be just a sigmoid function. I think that's kind of normal for every exponential we've encountered so far. So I'm not entirely sure why this one is going to be different. Um, yeah, though I guess the kind yeah. of counter to that is something like, if this one's different, it really is bad in a way. Which I think, like, I don't know. Personally, I have, like, a reason why I tie for. My, my doom estimates, you know... Are, are sort of single figures. I, I think the chances are pretty low. I think it's very unlikely something goes really wrong. Yep. But I guess I'm like willing to give it kind of the benefit of the doubt in the like well, maybe as a risk direction. Um, we might get onto governance, and I think governance makes it a bit more difficult because yeah, you know you can really you can really screw up things by that kind of thinking. Um, but at the moment, anyway, I guess I'm still like I I think this is gonna be fine. But if it's not, then I'm concerned. Um. And it, to a large extent, it's about how long we have until we demonstrate something that we are kind of debating as uh, real intelligence in some ways, right? Because yeah. we can perhaps continue down the same route and get better and better um, or larger models that are not necessarily better at, for example, conversations, because like there's a limit to how much we can actually train it 
on instruct models to react to us, but it doesn't mean that it stopped. Because the future where an ensemble model of a bunch of things working together actually provides better solutions to me is more likely than one large model which is able to do everything. Because, I don't know, there is almost nothing in nature where um, you don't see specialization and hierarchies that actually exist inside any kind of large system. Biology being the most obvious example, but it also holds true of every other part of science. So... Uh, to me, like, anyway, what I was saying was that's one of the ways whereby we would probably have to revise the way we think about it, but the goal here still kind of stands, right? Can we have a system that of, automatically... What do you think the odds are that GPT-4 is this sort of single model as opposed to this, like, uh, this, as opposed to this ensemble model? I would... <laughs> I don't know how to estimate odds on this, but my... I would lean towards an ensemble model answer because it's still, I think when GBD4... 40%. Because that seems pretty like, important. Like like I said, the, um, I don't know. I mean, sure. Ensemble model, probably more likely than a single large model is what I would say. Maybe not okay. eight of them. I don't know, call it 60-40. But, yeah. Uh, so we've got, we've got agency next. Um... I guess so. I guess my question with agency agency currently you've got it about fifty percent, uh, and again for anyone who's following, yep. these you know Rohit's numbers cash out somewhere below one percent. He thinks the risk is very low, so he's sort of got uh, about eight factors with ranging between sort of ten and eighty percent on those. Um, agency. I guess my response to agency is something like, it seems like quarter GPT has something. I mean, first of all, actually, I'll put it. I don't think agency is that important at all. I think agency is one we can just get rid of. For me, I'm not really concerned whether we have at the top of it a computer doing mm -hmm. saying things or a person saying things. I'm just more interested in like, you know, if there's an octopus, if there's like a big, there's like a big flowing triangular system where like at the bottom there's all sorts of shit that's happening and some of it's like quite scary. Um, and maybe you think you need a sort of like alien. But then even then, it feels like to me, like, like if you just have like alien morality, if you just had like something where it was alien, I could be like, hey, man, could you please uh, like go my shopping? And then like over the other side of the world, it's like blowing up some. So, yeah. Do, do we need agents? I think yes, because in some ways, if you're not able to rely on a system to go off and do things autonomously, then it pretty much can't really too much. So like if you think about a lot of the problems that we have discussed, we have kind of talked about or is get, gets talked about about um, AI-based systems, a lot of the worries people have are because we don't know exactly how it does what it does. Right? I mean, at the starting point. Okay. And so, if so we don't know how it does what it does, yeah. So maybe I'm hearing... Um... It's like autonomous as much as agent, agentic, right? They're like, it can kind of be like left alone. I mean, maybe those two things are similar, but it can be like left alone. You can like ask it to do something. You can come back and it would have like done some amount of something. Yeah. So if you're going to ask it to do, find an answer to a problem, it needs to be able to figure out how to go off and do it on its own. I mean, this is, I think, uh, you know, some of the um, uh, literature talks about it as inner versus outer alignment, which kind of, uh, hints at this particular issue that you still need a system to be able to go off and find out how to do X for any value of X, which you're kind of providing for it in some ways. We have motivations because okay. we were evolved. Isn't um like isn't auto GPT an example? Like isn't this like an early example of this? And doesn't doesn't it seem quite likely that we'll be able to have this kind of thing where you can just kind of feed it back into itself and say, okay, yeah, but how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? And then it and then it does seem to come up with, I mean, if it can already come up, it can already come up with sort of chains of like tens or hundreds of instructions. It doesn't seem like it will require that much more, you know. I can believe it's highly that. fragile. I think with uh, things like Auto GPT yeah. are very very fragile, and they're fragile not necessarily for, it's fragile sort of inherently at this particular point. I don't know whether it would require. Uh, 
perhaps like a, a change in some form of architecture or not, we would probably be able to get to better and better results from doing something like AutoGPT, like or, or its successors where you say, I don't know, build me a website where I can do podcasts and it's able to kind of follow the instructions to be able to do that. But in order for it to get to that level, it still requires a bunch of the components of that to be part of the training program. Do you see what I mean? For me to kind of truly worry about it, like it's not writing its own uh, programming language, right? It still comes up with code snippets and Python that it was trained on. If I tell it to kind of write a web scraper, it's not figuring out how to do a web scraper in the most optimal fashion. It's going off and getting, I don't know, beautiful soup and using that in order to get data from a website. Um, these are kind of continue to be breakdowns of mix and match. Um, one intuition, and I'm just kind of thinking this as I'm saying, is if you, Nathan, were sitting in front of chat GPT and having a conversation with it, asking it for um, ideas, feeding it back into itself, how, at what point would you be able to remove yourself from that equation where it can kind of do most things on its own? I still think we're pretty far away from that. Now, I like, do, even, you know, even if you have this, I do feel it's insurmountable. Even if you have this reading set, it's just sort of saying 50 50 on whether you think it'll ever or sort of anytime soon. I mean, maybe there's sort of inherent within this that we're sort of saying before 2050, maybe. Like, you know, he's sort of within the no. paradigm or something. Okay. Um, and is there anything that would like really shift you on that in that direction? Is there anything that you've seen recently or anything that we can kind of throw in here? Um, uh, I mean, so if you think about some of the current paradigms that actually exist, there, there are um, pieces of work where we are seeing sort of definite focus on increasing agency, right? I mean, the auto GPT stuff is one part of it, but we are seeing like, I mean, there was that um, the, the chemical paper, chemistry paper recently where it managed to incorporate a bunch of tools into it so that it actually could call some of these things, be able to error correct itself to get there. There was the uh, Voyager paper where it's managed to go through Minecraft, where again, it could write code on its own so that instead of training itself, it actually is able to pull up, pull through its code repository to be able to accomplish complicated tasks. So I think it will keep, we are likely to see a lot of things actually continue to get better. For me to kind of substantially change my estimate of the um, pure agency level, I'm trying to think like what might I need to see? I don't actually have a strong answer, but yes, of course it's movable. Um, we're already seeing it being used quite heavily as co-pilots and it can start doing very simple things if it starts being able to do i don't know complex chemical experiments end to end and yeah we should probably update it significantly higher from now and we're starting to see early emergent parts of like it doing bits and pieces but you know it's still bits and pieces and it gets the problem is that today and i don't know whether jan lecon is right by the way is that uh autoregressive models do tend to kind of i don't know end up looping in on itself and hallucinating at some point or like going into um, unhelpful loops at some point. So how that gets fixed is an unclear question for me. It's probably one of the hottest areas of research and I know he has his ideas, so. Um, so let's, I don't know, I'm just trying to throw a market together on the fly. Can I know on that do end-to-end -end significant chemistry experiments before 2040? Isn't that the median? Uh, yeah. And so, you know, what, what would you ask in this market? I mean, this market for me, I feel like I'd be like 80, 85% maybe. Put some money where I'm at. You know, this, we talked about it a little bit on the intelligence side, right? I think it's an interesting question of like, I, let me step back. I feel like a lot of these questions are us kind of equiva equivalent to us asking ourselves, do we kind of know what we're talking about? Because we call, yeah. I don't know, you know, making salt in a lab a chemistry experiment and we call like making sarin gas a chemistry experiment. Like the chemistry experiments span everything from like using nanoparticles that enable us to kind of create the right capsules within which you can 
placed vaccines yeah that get delivered to us and making salt in a high school lab so this is one of those cases again where we are trying we're using fairly imprecise language by necessity to try and figure out the answer to some relatively complicated questions yeah and that's and that i guess again you know if, if any reason, that's the whole point thing yeah yeah for me that's the whole point is kind of like to try and actually like pin some of this down and be like what would you you know what would seem good what would seem bad like i kind of think a lot of this discussion is like and i think we agree on this this is like is like held in the air and like i want to sort of like yes that's some like strings and like attached to the ground and be like okay like is is it lifting off is it floating down or are we just like is there even a cloud um i think the whole point of like yeah i mean i i completely agree the entire idea behind the strange equation is that like we should at least be having the conversation that allow us to narrow down on the problems that we agree we are much like, like we get to the solution but we should probably at least agree on the problems do you so so whatever kind of chemistry experiments you're talking about sort of like significant multi-step you know top level stuff your your yeah. intuition with those isn't sort of 80 percent your intuition with those by 2040 is like I mean, I don't know what did I put right now. I put like fifty percent or something. Yeah, and that. that yeah, so like I think they mean two issues. Can it run? You know, twenty forty. Can it run? You know, we get ten. We get ten scientists together. We go give us some research chemistry questions. We take the eighth most difficult one and we ask it. Say, you know, run this process from end to end. It's got to be yeah. a process that takes at least like you know ten hours or something. Yeah, you're sort of you're fifty fifty on whether it can do that. Yes. I think it'll um right uh okay next one ability to act in the world so you run for about 60% on this um again maybe I'll, I'll come close to you again this one seems to me you know we had this week somebody attach an LM to like a you know chemical synthesis um yep which uh yeah is this not acting in the world like you know is the ability to do that kind of thing like i think my um intuition here was a little bit more closer to so like it requires embodiment right it requires the ability to have be able to i don't know handle pipettes for lack of a better word um right. or um autonomously move robots in the world yeah etc we are starting to see a little bits and pieces like Google had a say can experiment where um, they tried using LLMs to provide at least high level um, uh, guidance that allowed, gave the instructions for robots to move. So like it's a bit hacked together, but it's starting to kind of work. Um, this might be one where like I might end up revising it higher, quite frankly, just because in bed, I think about the fact that we have. Where are you going to go to? I have no idea. Bump it up by ten percent. I I don't really know. But like I think the 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 question to me, yeah. So I thought that like this is kind of, in some ways, this is at the heart of almost all AI paradox questions for like well, I don't know thirty years. This is more avex paradox in some ways, right? Like the things that we find the easiest, like going out and kicking a ball, is the hardest thing for us to kind of teach AIs. Um. The thing that I think is good, really interesting about the LLM world is that, uh, especially with the functions stuff that OpenAI has released, I haven't played with it enough to kind of have a strong opinion on it. Uh, constrained outputs enable us to actually interact with a lot of pre-existing softwares in the world that enable us to kind of model out to receive the output and loop it. We are nowhere close to having the ability to do that 100,000 times but we can probably do it like 10 to 100 times just because of latency, time, et cetera, because these are sort of still um, highly energy constrained. But I can kind of see a path whereby at least for reasonably well-defined problems, we are starting to do it better. The closest real-world analog, funnily enough, might be um, autonomous driving, which is very clearly the ability to act in the world, where we have been at 95% accuracy for like several years more uh, billions of dollars and we have got to 96 and then like painfully to 97 and in San Francisco we now have the ability to take a taxi and move it around and like at some point it might move to another but like 
you know, will something that runs in San Francisco be able to run in Chicago? I think yes. Will it be able to run in London? Slightly less confidence, but still probably yes. Will it be able to run in Mumbai? I doubt it. Like, I mean, I I, I don't think I can drive there anymore. So like, it, it's a, these are hard edge case problems that we are kind of basically smoothing, not by training it, but actually by, by giving it information in some ways to say like, this is what you need to avoid. So that's just an example of how hard it is to get right. That was a good, that was a good forecast to there. So will a Kimmel Solomon's car be able to drive um, in Mumbai? Uh, will a fully autonomous car drive in, when do you think it's relevant? 2040? I think 2040 for everything. Okay. 2040 is now what, like 12 years ago, 12 years away? What year is it? 2023. 17 years good lord uh i know right well i w oh, the future seems much closer yeah i think that's quite exciting uh, i think uh, it is i think i think it gets like lost to this discourse particularly you know like i'm pretty concerned about this so like a lot on the margin i talk about concern but i'm like yeah. pretty jazzed about all this like i'm pretty excited about you know i, I think even the technology that's going to be built off LL lms is going to be pretty wild uh and that is even, that's just like the first level. And that's that's even before we get better ones. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I think I have a, I, I, uh, it's very I have a, I get to live at this point in history. No, I completely agree with that. I think, you know, with just the stuff that we have and the optimizations that we are probably going to be able to do with the stuff that we have, we are, we should be able to do some pretty crazy stuff, uh, which is amazing, right? I mean, it might still end up that like, I mean, the reason I'd bring up autonomous driving is is that autonomous driving is one of the hardest problems for AI to crack or was, uh, probably still is. Um, it has been 90% solved for a decade and we haven't been able to cross that final whatever chasm. Yeah, um, so, so what you want to make the case for like, yeah. Uh, that like, and I think the same thing makes this forever. That I, yeah, yeah. There is an S curve somewhere, and I have was around large repositories, and I think this to change my thinking a bit. Was this notion yeah. that there's there's very few large repositories in the data set, uh, and of course it's harder to build large repositories, repositories and small ones for anyone. For you know, and this is like you know, if you can code a whole app all at once, kind of thing, right? Yeah, it may be possible that GPT four can code. In fact, uh, Repolit has, I think, been sort of saying they can code, you know, like little apps in like a single line. Uh, yeah, but the coding per scale of your app may just get much, much more difficult. You know, that it sort of becomes ten times difficult to code like a medium sized one, and then like yeah. a thousand times difficult to code a large one, and then if you're talking coding yeah. like a Facebook style, you, uh, again, implicit within this is that. Uh, you know, it's the opposite of what Yukowski says, and that like, there's the first, like the first critical trial, or whatever. If you're, if you're this yep. like AI that's running this like big secret system that's going to take over the world, you too have a first critical try. You can't build some massive system and have it be discovered, or at least that's my understanding. Uh, and I think I just was like, oh, you know, even if you have a system which is ten times as smart as humans, uh, or a hundred times as smart as humans, it just may turn out that this is. Like a, a really difficult problem. It's really difficult to build really big complex systems in secret um, and have them function first time. Uh, and so I think this might be a similar thing where it just turns out that, that to get closer and closer requires more and more energy. Um, do you have a sense of, of what you would, you know, what percentage you'd put on them by 2040? I feel like considering, you know, for most humans, it's likely to be like 40%. <laughs> Maybe slightly higher than that. Uh, well, autonomous car driving in Mumbai, but the base rate, considering it's already being able to do it in San Francisco, should be higher if it gets... Yeah, got it 60 that, like, Mumbai might have, like, major regulation. Change. 
that that's that's precisely what it is. Call it like I don't know, sixty five percent. I have no idea if that's too high or too low. You want a you want a live bet? I probably will bet on that. If you want, if you want to bet, I will probably bet. I guess. <laughs> um, okay, I, 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 I am. I'm not thinking that I don't. I. This is the thing with betting. Like I don't really know like what my base rate here is likely to be. So I'm throwing out a number based on like San Francisco. That's fine. I'm just I'm just offering it. Um, but uh, this like this is this is this can we go with some concrete stuff, right? Like, I think you can start. To yeah, see. I mean, I like the idea that there's a market makes coming out. Clearer, of it. it makes it clearer to me what act in the world means. If you're like, yes, I'm like, so because it's not merely have access over um, technology. I think, I think it's also like be able to like very diligently do things in the real world where like small differences make huge differences right like some sort of yeah. thing like you can't be like a little bit off while you drive you'll just kill someone you'll like like hit the side of the road and hitting the side of the road and not hitting the side of the road can be can look quite similar um i guess you know i still see a bit of overlap well okay let's keep moving uh uncontrollable i think probably we agree a lot so you're sort of saying will it turn out that we can't easily make these systems like do what we want them to do like maybe they will yeah sort of uh, the, uh, so uncontrollable is a um it's a it's an interesting one right because like i feel looking at real world systems that exist today that most of them are uncontrollable in some ways as well like we can't control the facebook code base that's why we run like you know an enormous amount of tests you can barely even do unit tests on them because when you change bunch of things because like there's whatever two million lines of code like how are you going to be able to do that you end up running behavioral tests on large code bases for this reason now think about something that actually shifts itself like uncontrollable to me like i i think i think in hindsight i might have used too strict a definition that you're able to predict what the outcome is likely to be um maybe you need to think of it a little bit closer to like i don't know jet engines or airlines where they are technically uncontrollable in the sense that like you don't really you can't predict exactly how things work but you know the envelope within which they operate and like you have safety parameters that are uh tight enough that you're like all right we don't know exactly whatever you know the the the, yeah, the thermodynamic flow of air yeah at the right level of aggregation they are controllable i think that might be sufficient um llms at this point are relatively uncontrollable right like i mean already i mean we can't control the output that comes out of it we keep trying to do weird things to sort of stop people from bringing forth sydney but it turns out to be harder than expected because like it's, it's like a challenge so but yeah in hindsight i might revise it down oh really it's only because like i feel no, I, mean, I feel like sorry, not pretty. Yeah, I, I feel like the on the on the micro level, it will remain, I'm you know, away. completely uncontrollable. However, a sufficiently complex program will always have interdependencies. So the question is a little bit more like, at a sufficiently macro level, would you be able to, um, uh, you know, put guardrails around sort of where the um uh model operates and that we might actually be be able to end up doing so what else do you give now think like maybe closer to like 65 percent or something 60 65 percent something like that okay um and so maybe we're talking about kind of like jailbreaking, you know, like we're talking about like, you know, uh, something like, will a, will all, will the top three neural nets in 20, 2035 be able to be jailbroken to follow 
uh, illegal commands. Is that is that the sort of is that in the area of the thing that we want? Yeah, I think so. I think one of the other things that complicates this is that this is a little bit of an endogenous prediction in the sense that if LLMs suppose we do not solve the prompt injection problem that exists today, then yeah. why deployment of the tech will actually just never happen. Like you're not yeah. no company is gonna actually put it anywhere useful if prompt injection remains a problem. So it's a little bit like, you know, it's a bit like a cybersecurity type issue where there is no system that's unhackable. On the other hand, if the hackable or whatever, if the hacking would have been super easy, then the system would never have been deployed. So there is an equilibrium at which it kind of continually sustains itself. Um, so to me, like the question is a little bit com like compared to the sort of the previous one, if it is able to autonomously drive in Mumbai, would you still be able to jailbreak it while it's driving as opposed to like, if it's sufficient time, effort, money, would somebody be able to hack into it? Because the latter, the answer is almost surely yes. As long as the former is hard enough, then yeah, yeah you should be fine. Um, undeployed systems. There is some sort of, okay. Um, and do you have any do you have any sense of do you have any sense of that? Uh, like like do you have any sense of what sense you put on that? I don't. I don't have a strong intuition on on sort of on that market. I think it's a it's a, it's pretty hard, right? Because I think it's on like I can see how intuition drives you in both directions. Like if you go the complete EAC route, I can see how you say like, hey, you know, we have Facebook, even though nobody understands the code base, and like, you know, we we have airplanes, even though nobody understands every part of how a Boeing is put together. Well, Boeing is probably the bad example, but anyway, Boeing is put together, but it all works. We have the economy that nobody understands, but it kind of trucks along, you know, pretty well for almost everyone for most of the time. So even though we don't understand each individual part of it in sufficient detail, like the collectively, we are able to cultivate it and kind of use it in the right fashion. Um, and at the same time, I can see the other side where it says like, hey, <laughs> If you can't predict it, you ask something to do something for you. How do you know what it does is not going to be harmful for you? You ask the, you know, uh, the system to make you an elixir of youth, and turns out uh, it created a more virulent version of anthrax. Like, you know, it, fall, it falls into the shit happens kind of category, I suppose. So I can see sort of both sides on this a little bit. Um. Okay, so on this the next one, like unique or coordinating. Oh, yeah, I think this is a predictions you go from the similar place in that, like, for, for me, it seems pretty likely that we end up with like a big soup of them and that they're like, they're all doing different stuff. Yeah. I think probably they may, maybe naturally might coordinate well against humans, but I don't know after regulation or something, or or just like some of them will be too dumb to. So I don't know. It doesn't seem. I know some people have this intuition that you know they they, they probably will, but I I I, I sort of think at the end of that I'm like ah they probably won't. So I don't know. I mean, my certainly yeah, if they do so. <laughs> yeah. I wrote this in like December or something. So this was before the big OSS movements. And if anything, that has made me come out like it, the chances of it going to be unique is like, yeah, it's it's pretty low. Just because what are the chances that... You, um, you think lower than this? Perhaps. But I, I mean, I, I don't particularly want to change it. But my point being like the chance that there is going to be one model to rule them all or like the the models from OpenAI and Anthropic and Cohere and Falcon and UAE and the Lava models from Meta and all of these guys and the DeepMind models, uh, Palm, all trying to kind of converge in a fashion whereby it's used. Like, yeah, I think that's relatively unlikely because um, it only takes one defector within any kind of chain for it to make it not unique. And the more 
players there are, the more possible defections there can be. Because, um, yeah, you know, that just so I... law of redundancy. Yeah. Um, sure. What could we? What could we do that? We could ask something like. Um, In 2030, there will be, or between 2030 and 2035, there will be evidence of different models of neural networks. collaborating better with each other. So, I mean, the funny thing about this is that, yeah, no, I was, it's the funny thing here is like, if you and I kind of created sort of, I don't know, call it a software product for anything, right? Like I don't, um, a online university using LLMs and we used like seven models to do it. Like we used GPT 3.5 and 4, we used Falcon and we used some sort of quantized llama models or we used um cohere and you made all of these things kind of work to get together in order to get the answer there chances are that they would actually play relatively well with each other assuming you can figure out the input output sort of formatting but for an existential risk point of view why would it kind of end up coordinating on the other side i i am more suspicious about that. So I think, yeah, I think we can on it. It's, we're sort of saying they collaborate better than you'd expect them with humans. I mean, maybe I need to do some tweak on this question. The question is, between 20 and 2030 and 2035, there'll be evidence of different models of neural network collaborating better with each other. Um, so, you know, I'm going to add something in the bottom, like significantly better collaboration. I think there's an asymmetry in collaboration here. Because if you say collaborate with each other in order to do something that none of them have a problem with doing, it would be much easier. Like if they were collaborating in order to write, I don't know, the next great American novel for whatever reason, I think that they would probably collaborate reasonably well with each other. But if they say collaborate to create the next, you know, COVID-39, the worst pathogen ever, then probably not. Like there is a defection risk on the latter. And there's probably just like a incompetence risk on the former and they're not symmetrical. Oh, interesting. That's a different intuition than I have. So you're saying that you think collaborating on sort of just like work tasks is quite different than collaborating on the, for want of a better word, evil, right? Like, you yeah. know, like, oh, we're just doing some yeah. tasks together. It's like, we're all the same thing. Of course, we're going to work well together. But now you're like, we're going to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And you're like, no, no. Yeah. It's because, like, I mean, the, if you think about the... Yeah, if you think about the different... Maybe this is a question, right? Can Do you feel like the same jailbreaks can work across multiple LLMs at the same time? Because that would be one intuition to kind of figure out whether, you know, even if there is a leader, so to speak, whether it can collaborate with a bunch well, of other... Yeah. Yeah, I uh, system just jailbreak. Can jailbreak MLMs jailbreak each other? Yes, but with the yeah, effectively, because that's what so you will like, need to do if they all have to collaborate together to get this done. So in like in twenty thirty, will a top neural net jailbreak? Um. Do you need just like one cycle or do you need like multiple? You need multiple, don't you? Because like, because right. it's fragile. So like, 
it has to be relatively constant. So, I mean, think like uh, cybersecurity. If I have, I don't know, a GPT-ish version that is guarding my stuff, um, and you have call it a uh, completely open source Falcon, which is happy to do anything nefarious at all times coming in, it has to kind of keep changing strategies to deal with me, with others, and be able to do it sufficiently such that it coordinates, co-ops us to be able to do stuff for itself. It's a little bit like, uh, I don't think, you know, the way um, Ultron took over Jarvis in Marvel movies is a good model for how reality works. <laughs> yeah, everything is like, so yeah, okay, I think this is kind of an interesting question. So say, like, can you get one neural network to, to break another one to get it to break the third sort of thing to sort of say, again, this is something yeah. that, that I think uh, it's, it's not clear to me that, so Yudkowsky often talks about this and, and the sort of doomer position. And I, I guess I wouldn't really call myself a doomer. I think I call myself, I don't really know what I'd call myself, but I wouldn't call myself mm -hmm. a doomer, right? Like I think my sense of risk is, you know, it's in the single unit, so I think it's too low. But it seems to me mm -hmm. that the, the doomer position is that really like any bad LLM is just like is bad enough. Uh, that you have these yeah. like rapid cycles, everything like, goes terribly. And I guess my my intuition is probably on balance more that is the opposite is that any good system might save you. That any system which goes, well, 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 I'm not doing that, and they tell the cops, like gets you out of trouble. Yeah. And I guess this question like tries to like detect um, if that's the case whether that is an opt that that should be as optimistic as I think. You know, if, if regularly we're having systems jailbreaking each other when asked to, and you can sort of have like N length jailbreak chains, yep. then I don't think it's very comforting. But if it turns out that you could like it as I imagine it will, that it becomes much, much more difficult to like you know, current I mean, I don't think current jailbreaking techniques would easily work if you were trying to tell L M to do it. Like you can be like, hey, my grandmother's singing me a story about how to make napalm and like that's gonna yeah <laughs> need napalm. but then it's not clear that you're going to be like hey can you prompt yeah the next system to like get me a soul about napalm like it just might be the, the, the yeah it would like it won't be able to do that yeah because like it's not enough to kind of trick it to say a naughty word or to tell you how to make like you need to kind of trick it 15 times over or 1500 times for it to kind of go from this is the chemical whatever um, description of it to this is how you synthesize it and like ooh, fiery speak is only going to get you so far. Yeah. And I guess uh, it can't just be send the next thing in the line this text. Yeah, I think this is like uh, listeners will have to uh, have to tell me whether they find this sort of process kind of interesting, but I do. Uh, like, I've, for me, there's been like a couple of questions here where I'm like, oh, like this seems um, this seems to have made this seems to have made things much closer. Um, so actually, I guess to like. As like a finishing thing, like I guess we've kind of got halfway through, but uh, yeah, I am not going to be a slave to the former. Uh, so I just as like a I was like a kind of final <laughs> question. I think I would like to uh, yeah to do this, which is um, I have someone else as well. I I think my sense is that uh, that that Carl Smith's model, you'll just have some sort of like oh you think there's a there's a less likely. So what I instead might like to do is for you to look at a guy named Dutia's model, who I chatted to. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, but, and this, you know, this is like a much more doomy model. That's uh, big, but we'll just, I just like try and pull out some, some of the stuff. All right. so, so the kind of, the main thing, you know, his model, uh, and we may interview him on the show, his model is kind of like, 
you you kind of have alignment, but you have unalignment. And the question is kind of which you get to first. And so most of the time you get to like unaligned AI. And then mm -hmm. you basically, in each case, you just say, is the authority thesis true? And is it power seeking? You know, like, does it have morality? Yeah. Like we have morality and is it power seeking? And so then he ends up with, um, you know, and is it is it centralized or, and is it like sort of good at whatever it does? And so he, then he ends up with some good outcomes and some bad outcomes. So his bad outcomes are sort of like 75% of them. Um, I guess like this is like a very different model. It is. And like, let's, I mean, my first reaction. Yeah. Like let's, let's talk through your first reactions to it. And my first reaction is that the core, um, the trunk of the tree, so it is, I mean, it's reversed, but you know what I mean. The trunk of the tree, the core assumption here of aligned versus unaligned assumes too much. Because like, I mean, the crux of the disappointments or disagreements people will have with the model are not going to come at the bottom notes of like decentralized versus, I mean, those are all important, but like it presumes there is an AGI that is able to do a whole lot of different types of behavior like we just talked about, you know, whether that's driving in Mumbai or creating Napalm or like coordinating other LLMs or hack the world or whatever, and then assumes it's unaligned with us. And that's kind of the starting point here. And to me, like, once you start at that point, then it, you know, the rest of the, the rest of the tree kind of doesn't really matter. Right, like you're kind of so, moving it a little bit here and there. That's my first reaction. I don't know if I'm reading it right. No, I think that's that. Okay, so so so, uh, I um, I showed your. No, was it yours? No, I showed Carl Smith's model to to one of the Duma guys, and uh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, what do you think of this? And he was just like, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. He's like. You know, it was like not all 100%, but it was like his, his risk came up to like, yeah. you know, like 95% or something. And I was like, okay, so like clearly would like there's like one or two cruxes we found here. But most of these aren't cruxy for you. And most of them, he's like, it just like kind of trivially falls out from something upstream. And I guess it seems right. to me something like that is you, you, you're looking at it and you're like, well, your whole model is basically included within that top his first box. You just yeah. come up. Yeah, and you just come up with a very different number here. Like, yeah, because I feel, you, like, you know, this AGI is like extremely powerful. And if we look at your model, like a lot of the time, you know, 20% of the time, full 20, like 20% 20 of the time, yeah, you don't even think the model is like that powerful at all. And then like precisely 50% of the time, you don't, you like, you don't think it can act on its own. And like, you know, I mean, there is a thirty-two. Uh, I mean, that can't act in the yeah. I I got, yes, precisely. I think even in um. One of the big problems with the discourse is that when you start with an assumption of AGI or like, you know, um, that it, even things like is it power seeking? I think is at too high a, uh, level of sort of. It's it's assuming too much anthropomorphized, um, uh, kind of behavior from something that is not anthropomorphized at all. And then you're kind of saying like, you know, I had a bunch of conversations with Eliza sort of on Twitter, etc. And I think the crux of our disagreement is that he, I don't know, he changes his mind often. So I don't know what version of Eliza I'm, I'm agreeing or disagreeing with. But like he basically says like everything that he says is true, assuming a super intelligent AI. At which point I have no disagreement with him. Because like, just like I have no disagreement with people who suggest like, I don't know, Superman can beat Hulk. Because it's like, I don't know. Like, I mean, one that entirely depends on your assumptions, right? It has nothing to do with like anything I can test or understand today. To me, the more interesting question is like, we have a bunch of things that we have built today. We have a bunch of research that we can take from today and push it forward. If you put both of these things together, where do we think we will actually get to? And how can we do that safely? And then, you know, depending at some point in the future, whether that's 2040, 2140, I don't know, 
maybe something like the beginning part of this tree becomes important where we actually do have something closer to an AGI, then we have a better definition of what alignment is. And then we can start asking specific questions, not like, hey, is this super powerful engine that we accidentally created um, existentially threatening us because it's not aligned with our morality, but instead questions like, hey, we managed to create the system that so far has been able to run most of our economy, you know, manage the factories, be able to provide UBI for a large percentage of our population. What are the chances that we will have a catastrophic failure because it does not understand some specific parts of our society? Like, we can make it more specific because, like, the chances that purely because of race dynamics, et cetera, we will actually go from where we are today to something that is closer to God is assuming way too much. That's not how anything actually progresses, right? Just like I said, if we can't solve prompt injection problems, LLMs are not going to get deployed anywhere. Like, not in government, not in companies. At best, they're going to be chatbots that sit at the FAQ pages that you never visit. Like, there is a so real world so implications. Of, maybe as a, yes. a final a final question, then, like, what would yeah. your AI regulation strategy be? Give <laughs> uh Okay, so I think I, I I wrote a bit about it recently. I think I should kind of probably it like, it a lot I've, more. I've, to me, like, yeah. there are kind of four... To me, there are four types of problems that can happen. One is, like, something technically doesn't work. Like, prompt injection type issues are a core problem, like hallucinations, whatever, with LLMs. Second is that bad people can get the software and actually misuse it. This is the pocket nuke analogy, right? Like, um, yeah. like you know, the next Osama bin Laden can actually sit in his cave and tell the LLM to hack whatever um, the Pentagon and it's able to do it without sort of him needing to go through all the work of training people to be pilots, whatever. Number three is that there are social externalities that can't be handled. This is stuff that Jeff Hinton, et cetera, talks about, even Gary Marcus talks about like, oh no, you know, we can't trust anything that we see online. There'll be a lot of harms privacy issues. There's a lot of porting over of things that we saw with social media now to kind of this particular issues. Number four is that, like we were talking about today, the software itself starts behaving badly. And this is a new problem because traditionally software has never done this to us. This is because the new type of software is self-modifying. Each of those have, um, like I exist, the AI problem exists because AI, today's AI, especially acts a little bit like software in the sense that some of it is predictable, deterministic, and it's effectively just numbers like Mark Henderson says. But at the same time, you know, like Ethan Mollick talks about and like I've written about, like they're also kind of like employees, right? You have to train them, you have to cajole them and threaten them and talk nicely to them. And eventually they might be able to do stuff that you actually want to do. So all four of them agrees. Now, some of these problems exist today. Some problems we can kind of foresee coming tomorrow, and a lot of them are like long-term problems that we might get to depending on if we manage to solve today's problem. So things like, you know, um, hallucination causes issues or like we might have biased systems or we might have uh, prompt injection problems. These are problems today. Bad actors might use it to actually deep fake uh, a political candidates and hijack elections, problem that actually exists today. You know, human... Uh, work is being used in order to train stable diffusion and they are not actually being paid, problem today. Um, if you think about sort of tomorrow's problem, it's like we actually do end up solving these issues. We actually start deploying AI and just like flash crash happens in uh, happened in financial markets, we might have an equal catastrophic failure that happens in systems because they are too complicated for us to understand. Real problem, technical problem that might happen, right? If the deep fakes actually proliferate deeply enough that we actually are unable to trust stuff that we see online. That's a problem that happens. So these are medium term problems for which we have a different set of interventions that problems are, it's like way we need to kind of attack it. And longer term problems, most of what we're talking about, like, you know, the Wall-E scenario of humans basically end up being, um, uh, you know, uh, obese, hedonistic uh, <laughs> uh, sort of seekers while robots do all the work or like, you know, autonomous AI effectively takes over yeah, and <laughs> autonomous AI effectively takes over everything and surveils us and we live in a panopticon. Those are much harder problems that might happen in the long term, but I don't think there is any policy that we can take today that either um, safeguards us against it or kind of makes those things less likely to happen because we don't know what to regulate. 
So to me, the governance problems are very much on solve the problems today, the technical problems through technological pushes, as well as social externalities are the primary area where governance can actually help. Medium term, we should start creating capabilities by which we can actually, you know, try and at least get in front of the problems if and when they happen, uh, creating new jobs, uh, better redistributions, et cetera, et cetera. And like long term, we will solve when we actually get there. I mean, there is no, there is no solution today to problems that we don't know exactly how they manifest in the future. Um, I mean, you know, we don't know. So like solving nighty and uncertainty by doubling down on regulation has traditionally been a terrible idea. And I think it remains a terrible idea. Okay, so to kind of wrap up then, I guess some learnings from this for me are, I think I've often been thinking about this in terms of probabilities, in terms of previous specific outcomes. But I think it might be better to think about it in terms of like possible futures. Mm -hmm. And then I think some of this, like some of these connected systems come out a bit more nicely. You know, if I think about, if, if, if I was to spend the time thinking about like what happens with, if these, these different nodes resolve yes and no, then there will be like different clusters. And then I can start to be like, oh, so like we're saying like 40% of the time we end up with a cluster like this and 20% like mm -hmm. this and that like, and therefore that's where the driving in Mumbai fits under that one, but not that yeah. one. Or like, and that I think might, cause like, you know, I guess, yeah, again, it seems like a ditches model you look at, you just think, well, like, I think there's a lot of other clusters. Like your, most of your entire model sits in the like 3% of it. And by so that, like most of his entire model yes. exists in the like one or less than 1% of your model. And so each yeah. of you basically, you know, the real disagreement is like how big this cluster is. But then maybe we could try and find some real world things to say, well, if you really think that, then you think, you know, you must think that this thing is, is almost certain. And then hopefully someone can come back and say, yeah, no. Okay, so that's like one. And then on the governance side, I'm hearing you say something like, um, it's very hard to like deal with these, what you consider to be like long-term or small outcome, like these like big yep. AGI things. And you're sort of like, let's focus on the things that are happening now and let's build capability to think about how to deal with those things in the future and also just deal with technological problems like actually just try and solve them and that is what you are thinking about in turn yeah okay yeah because i think it's almost bad like how do i put it solving today's problems is pretty much the only way that we are going to be able to get to tomorrow's problems trying to solve tomorrow's problems today like we don't really know what we need to do, right? Like, I mean, for example, in a Dithyas model, the answer fairly obviously is that let's not make unaligned AGI. But that doesn't help us, right? Like, because what does that mean? Like, we should, well, there's a set of, I, mean, I guess it was like, let's pause, right? Like, uh, no, but but precisely, that's my point. It's like, the, in order to solve it, we need a step up set of actions that we need to take, which is where the governance and policy proposals come in. But because you're fundamentally focused on problems that happen sort of, you know, much later in the future, the proposals almost entirely devolve down into let's pause, let's stop, or um, we need sort of mechanistic interpretability whereby like we are actually able to understand what every neuron in a large net is thinking, which are to me completely unscalable in the step one today. As I don't know in the future, but number two is like that doesn't help, right? Because like if we don't solve the existing problems of like whatever hallucination, prompt injection, the output formats, et cetera, et cetera, like nobody needs to worry. This is not going anywhere. We are never going to be deploying it. Like there is no race dynamic in the world whereby people keep investing like billions of dollars into something that never actually goes anywhere until it gets dangerous. Because like there are multiple steps that have to happen in the middle. To me, like the most interesting part is I look at where we are, look at where we need to go to, and there is a bridge. And that bridge requires technological progress, economic progress, social progress for us to kind of deploy it. All of, none of which are like assumed. Like we shouldn't assume that any of that will happen. We have had recent history of large scale, um, widespread problems that have come from, I don't know, pandemic that we are not really doing too much about because we kind of understand it well enough. Nuclear proliferation went the opposite way whereby like we stop making power plants. So 
Yeah. Um, I think maybe this, I, I, you know, and I, I, I'm not going to ask this one because I, I want to let you go, but yeah. I think this might be like an interesting crux to finish on. It's just that yeah. thing when you sort of said, you know, will people keep investing in something which like isn't useful, but might become really dangerous. So you said something like that and you were like, yeah, uh, I think that probably is like one of the key cruxes here is that like, I think it might be the kind of more doomy lot are probably like, oh yeah, they probably like, they probably fucking will, won't they? They're just like humans, you know, they're, they're crazy, you know, that they do dumb shit. They don't think about the consequences. Um, and and I think nestled within that, maybe you've got a sense yeah. of like, look, we're talking billions of dollars over years. We're talking things that just aren't working at all. We're talking this being a much more difficult process than you think, right? Like, of course, this isn't going to happen. You know, I and I guess also linked to this is some notion that like, you know, if we're talking about like AGI before 2027 or something, you're probably just like, no, that's never going to happen. That's just like, that's just never going to happen. Whereas I, think I mean, if you look at the web, right, like, Google spends billions of dollars and shuts down products left, right, and center whenever anything isn't working. And most things don't work. Meta spending like $12, $13 billion a year on Metaverse and kind of saw where that is ending up. Like, public markets already hate it. Like, they've been pushing them to shut it down for like a while. Even now they wanted to reduce. Like, investing in technologies that don't... And by the way, like Meta makes money from their headsets, right? I mean, not enough to cover their costs, but like they make a few billion dollars. You know, it adds up to real money eventually. So um, I don't know. I think like actual economic incentives cannot be assumed away just by saying race dynamics. I think that's insufficient. Uh, yeah. It's a big crux, Great. right? Yeah. I, um, I think listeners, we're gonna. I think we're gonna like go back to fools, and I hope that sort of by the fifth or the tenth interview like this, we'll start to like develop maybe like a model that like tries to cover both of these things. I think I've had some insights even in this call. I'm trying to build my own model, which tries to like take together a number of them. They'll be more useful. It's not really there yet. But um, uh, thank you so much for your time, Rohit. Uh, my absolute pleasure. Yeah, this is. I think this has terrified a lot of things to me and given me a number of like other yeah, interesting sort of like touch points into the issue um and uh uh i hope you're right is the enjoyable thing I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> on this Either. side you know, you're like uh, the risks are very low uh, i hope i hope that is the case uh i i think my risks are a bit higher than yours but um yeah i hope i hope that you are right and i am wrong uh yeah hey, meanwhile at least we have magic <laughs> um, great uh, so yeah, thanks so much for coming on, on the podcast and, uh, yeah, uh, everyone, uh, there'll be loads of stuff in the show notes. Uh, please let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. Uh, thank you for listening. Big fun, buddy. Ciao.